Hey guys, I want to do a video today and look at new heavens and new earth. I also want to look at new heaven and new earth. These are different in the Bible. New heavens and new earth is mentioned in 2 Peter 3. It's also mentioned a couple of times at the end of Isaiah. New heaven, new earth is mentioned one time at the end of the book of Revelation in Revelation 21. I want to show you the differences between the two. There are distinctions between the two, and this is going to be an in-depth study as part of a larger study looking at answering the questions, has the millennial kingdom of Christ already occurred, and are we now in Satan's little season? So let's get to it. And let's start with the book of Hebrews, reading the first two verses, and I want you to look at the word worlds. This is mentioned twice in the Holy Bible. Worlds, W-O-R-L-D-S. And there's a reason for it. God, who at sundry times and in divers manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days, and you'll see that term several times in the Holy Bible, last days, speaking to those people, that generation, Spoken unto us by a son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So plural, not world, but worlds. We see it again in Hebrews 11, 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So let's go further and explore that word worlds. And we're going to look now at a couple of verses that talk about world. 2 Peter 2 5, and let's go to 2 Peter 2 in context, verse 4 and 5. For God spared not the angels that sinned, speaking of false prophets, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So in 2 Peter 2, 5, Peter speaks of an old world. So that must mean that there is a new world after the old world. Let's go to 2 Peter 3, and in context we'll go to, starting in verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers again, that term last days, walking after their own lusts and saying, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So going back to verses 5 through 7, specifically verse 6, the world that then was, so the old world, perished, but the new world, the heavens and earth, which are now, they are kept and in store and reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So, the old world perished the time before Noah's flood. That is considered the old world. After the flood, the antediluvian time period, we have a new world. The new heavens and new earth after the flood. This is a new heavens and new earth. This is a new world. The first world was completely desolated by the flood. And afterwards, Noah and his wife, his sons and his wives, replenish the earth. This new heavens and new earth. And throughout the time from the flood to Jesus Christ, we see a lot of descriptions of what happened during that time period in the Holy Bible. Going through with the three patriarchs, 
the life and times of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to the time of Moses, leading the children of Israel, to King David and his kingdom, and his son, King Solomon, building the first temple, ultimately to the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day, overcoming death on our behalf through his resurrection. That's what we believe on for eternal life, his work on the cross. But this time period from Noah and his sons replenishing the earth after the flood to Jesus Christ is considered the new world of that time. The old world before the flood perished. So before Jesus' death on the cross, he spoke to his disciples through the Olivet Discourse that we see in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. And what was Jesus telling his disciples in the Olivet Discourse? Well, he was answering their questions about what was soon to take place. We see in Matthew 24, 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Oz, speaking of Jesus, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The end of the world, their world that they know at that point in time, that world that had been created, that new heavens and earth, from the time of Noah's flood to the time that they're sitting there with Jesus on the Mount of Olives where he tells them. And he talks about a time upcoming for that generation, a time of great tribulation. And he goes through things that are soon to occur. He talks about signs that they will see. In Matthew 24, 29, he says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. He relates what prophets of the past have told people of this upcoming judgment, this upcoming time. Isaiah 34, 4, and all the host of heaven shall be dissolved and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll and all their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falleth off from the vine and as a fallen fig from the fig tree. In Isaiah 51, 6, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke and the earth shall wax old like a garment and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. In Joel 2, 30 and 31, And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And this, this is quoted by Peter in Acts 2. For that generation, he was quoting Joel of the time that was at hand that was coming up. The six seals, sign of the times that we see in Revelation 6 of massive earthquakes, the sun becoming black, the moon becoming darkened, and stars falling from heaven. The trumpet judgments that we see followed by the vile judgments in the book of Revelation. These events were related by John on the Isle of Patmos, seeing a vision from Jesus after his death, burial, and resurrection. But before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus said the same thing to his disciples of these events that were upcoming for that generation. And he said in Matthew 24, 34, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And the prophets previously also discussed of this time period. Isaiah 13, 13, Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. 
Haggai 2, 6, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And the trumpet and vile judgments that we see in the book of Revelation were prophecies of the soon-to-occur judgment of that generation. The time is at hand. It shortly must come to pass. These things that you see in the vile judgments, the trumpet judgments, and at that time, the fall of Jerusalem occurred in 70 AD. The second coming of Jesus Christ occurred and the destruction, the fall of Rome, the Roman Empire, and ultimately throughout the world, civilizations were judged and destroyed at that time as prophecy. You see here the fall of Rome. You see here the destruction of Jerusalem. And here you see a rendition of worldwide cataclysmic events that occurred of that generation upon the civilization of the earth. Worldwide destruction, desolation, judgment of that time, that generation occurred. And I believe the trumpet judgments focus in on that time period of judgment on Jerusalem and the Roman Empire and the vile judgments show a broader scope of judgment upon the earth and the civilizations that were on earth at that time. But we see this fiery judgment over and over again in the Psalms, in the prophets, the hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth in Psalms 97, 5. And I believe catastrophic events occurred, events like this, worldwide. Micah 1, 4, And the mountains shall be molten under him, and the valley shall be cleft as wax before the fire, and as the waters that are poured down a steep place. Again, the earth was destroyed by fire at that time and became desolate. Nahum 1.5, the mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence, yea, the world, and all that dwell therein. And this time period, again, was prophesied and was told to the Hebrews, to the children of Israel, prior to the destruction of Jerusalem. book of Hebrews, written by Paul, was a warning to them of the soon upcoming judgment in Hebrews 9 26 for then must he often have suffered speaking of Jesus Christ since the foundation of the world but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself now once in the end of the world this was the end of their world that generation at that time we see this not only this admonishment to the Hebrew nation, the Israelites, but also the churches throughout the Roman Empire in 1 Corinthians 10, 11. Now all these things happen to them for in samples, showing Old Testament examples of judgments. And they are written for our admission, admonition, that generation on whom the ends of the world are come. So the ends of the world, the known world as they know it, are coming to an end. In 1 Corinthians 7.31, For the fashion or makeup of this world passes away. In Hebrews 1, Paul again speaking to this upcoming judgment to Israel is quoting from Psalm 102 and states, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment, and as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. So there is coming the end of their world 
It is going to be judged through the trumpet and ball judgments, ultimately through fire. And the world at that time was going to become desolate and change. Afterwards, the promise of a new heavens and new earth were to be established. Just like after the flood, there was a new heavens and new earth. After the destruction by fire at that time, subsequently, there was a new heavens and new earth. These are the promises that we see in the book of Isaiah 65, 7, 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. In Isaiah 66, 22, For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. In 2 Peter 3, 11 and 12, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the element shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. After this judgment, a new heavens and new earth for that generation was to be established. This was the inauguration of the millennial reign of Christ. This was the fulfillment of the prophecy in Daniel 2 in Nebuchadnezzar's statue, where the feet of iron and miry clay were destroyed by the stone, Jesus Christ, the iron being the Roman Empire, the clay being the children of Israel within it, and all the kingdoms of the world came toppling down at his second coming at these judgments, and the stone became a mountain and filled the entire earth. That is the millennial kingdom of Christ being established. This is the new heavens and new earth that were promised that we see in the book of Isaiah, that we see in 2 Peter 3. Let's go to Revelation 20 now. Speaking of the millennial kingdom, and we'll read the first six verses. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received as more upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. The all-important first resurrection. This occurred during that time. It was a promise from God. To that generation. We see in 1 John 3, 2 and 3, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. This is a promise of God of this upcoming judgment and then a resurrection and a new heavens and new earth being established. Now, this promise from God is an everlasting promise, an everlasting covenant. It applies to us today that are in Satan's little season. We will, we are sons of God as believers and we 
will appear as he is at his next coming when he comes down in the future within the city of New Jerusalem, which has not occurred yet. These promises are our promises too, but this was specific for that generation of that time of these upcoming times, and there was a first resurrection. There will be a resurrection at the last day that we as believers will experience. This is something different, the first resurrection and life in the millennium. And as God chose the generation of the Israelites from the time of the first covenant from Moses to be a light unto the world, to declare the good news of the Messiah to come. They were a chosen generation. They were peculiar people. They were chosen for a purpose. The same thing occurred here. They had a little over a thousand years at that time to proclaim the good news of the Messiah to come. Now, after the death, burial, and resurrection, a chosen generation was established for a thousand years to get the word of God, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ throughout the world. And this occurred through resurrected saints. This occurred through angels, as we see in Revelation 14, proclaiming the everlasting gospel. This occurred through the disciples who were beheaded, the disciples who did not take the mark of the beast, that had the promises of the first resurrection. And the 12 disciples, apostles specifically, were promised in Matthew 19, 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the sons, Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the 144,000, the twelve tribes of Israel. This chosen generation that were sealed in their foreheads prior to the trumpet and vile judgment, they were saved. They had mortal salvation through these judgments and went on as mortal believers for the establishment of the good news of Jesus Christ. There were remnants throughout the civilization that did not perish from these judgments. And this is who the 144,000, the resurrected saints, went out to tell and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and to establish this millennial reign. They were a chosen generation, just like the Israelites were prior to the cross. After this chosen generation, a royal priesthood, just like we saw in Revelation 20, that these resurrected saints were to reign as priests with Christ for a thousand years. They're a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And this is what they did. They went out just like we are to do today, just like. Jesus commanded his disciples to do prior to his death, burial, and resurrection. These saints, the 144,000 mortal believers, went throughout the world, going out, teaching the nations, baptizing them, converting them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Jesus was with his disciples unto the end of the world. And when they were resurrected, he was with them during the millennial kingdom. And they went out and proclaimed the gospel during this time. That was a specific purpose, one of the specific purposes for this era. It was a specific time period that had a beginning, had an ending, and it was for a particular purpose. After the destruction and desolation of that generation and a new heavens and new earth being established.
but not only were they commanded to go out and preach the gospel throughout the world, but also to build up the waste places and the desolate places that were destroyed. In Isaiah 58, 12, And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. Why did they, why was this commanded? Because the previous civilization and the buildings within melted. They literally melted, and we see evidence of this today. If they weren't melted, they're underwater from cataclysmic earthquakes. And again, we see evidence of this today. This is all evidence of the cataclysmic event that we read about in the book of Revelation. And they shall build the old waste places. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And they shall build houses, and this is continuing verses, and there's so many verses in the Bible about this. It's just, just touching on a few of them, Isaiah 65, 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. This is speaking of the new heavens and new earth that were being established during the inauguration of the millennial kingdom of Christ. And did they ever establish it? All the old world buildings, the angelic architecture, this is evidence of the millennial kingdom of Christ. And they built these structures with spires, palaces, impeccable exterior and interior designs, it's the Palace of Versailles, the Hall of Mirrors. They had domes, spires. These were energy sources. These were places of worship. These were built by mortal believers through the direction of resurrected saints and angelic beings during the Millennial Kingdom. There for specific purpose. Again, a source of energy, a place of worship. We see evidence of somatics. You see here, right in here, these are all patterns of sound that are displayed on the exterior of many of these buildings. The Cathedral in Milan, and it goes on and on and on. The interior, impeccable design to bring in light, to maximize sound. All of these were built during the Millennial Kingdom. And they were built all over the world. Not only in Europe, but in the Americas, in Asia, in India, in... Am I leaving anything out? Tartaria, <laughs> but they were built all over the world. But again, at the end of this thousand years, Satan was loosed out of his prison. We read in Revelation 27, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his prison. This thousand years that is mentioned six times in six verses in Revelation 20. This is a literal thousand years. A lot of people will say, no, it's not. It is symbolic. Other people, full predest, will say, no, a thousand means 40, which there is no um, scripture to support that showing examples of a thousand equaling 40. But this thousand years, mentioned six times, then why do most Scholars and people that read the Bible all agree that the five times in the book of Revelation that 42 months is mentioned either as three and a half years, as 1260 days, as time, times, and half time, this 42 month period, why do they think that that's literal? They all think that's literal three and a half years mentioned five times in the book of Revelation, but Six times in the book of Revelation were thousand years. All of a sudden it's symbolic. 
Well, let me ask you this. What if I also showed that there's a period of time in our past that lasted a thousand years that has been hidden, the Dark Ages, the period of time where most historians say not much happened and it was a, a period where we don't know a lot about. And what if I told you that another empire was established at that time after the fall of Rome, the Byzantine Empire? And what if I told you that, that lasted a thousand years? Why don't we learn about the Byzantine Empire in our schools? Why do we see Byzantine mosaics showing saints emanating light, resurrected saints and angels communicating with mortal beings? It's because the thousand years is literal and we're in Satan's little season and it's been hidden because we're in the era of deception. I think it believe, I think it started in 1776, but I'm not dogmatic on that. It could have been earlier. It could have been later. But the Statue of Liberty representing the loosing of Satan. You see the chain on his, her feet, the torch, and Lady Liberty. Liberty which is really a man seen here. So let's go now finishing on this thought of new heavens and new earth. I've shown you the new heavens and new earth after the flood, the new heavens and new earth after the judgments, the trumpet and vile judgments and destruction of the world at that time by fire. Now let's look at new heaven and new earth which is at the end of the book of Revelation. This is completely different. And let's just start here at verse 7. We'll read to verse 11. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his prison, shall go out to deceive the na nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. I think this is the time period that we are in right now. We're during that time where Satan is deceiving the nations and gathering them together for battle. Verse 9, And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. This period of time where the compassing of the camp of the saints and the beloved city by the armies of the nation. This has not occurred yet. Verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. In verse 11, And I saw a great white throne judgment. This is something still to come. The great white throne judgment, the resurrection at the last day, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Verse 11 again, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. So now, at the end of the book of Revelation, we see that heaven and earth fled away. This is not talking about a changing of the garments. This is not talking about wiping the earth out with a flood. It's not talking about wiping the earth with molten heat, fervent heat. This is talking about heaven and earth literally fleeing away. And no place was found for them. And then at the beginning of Revelation 21, 1 and 2, John's vision, he saw, and it starts out, and I saw a new heaven, singular, and a new earth. For the first heaven, singular, and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is something in the future. This new heaven 
and new earth. The first heaven and first earth, they fled away, it passed away. This is the first heaven and first earth that we are on now. It has gone through periods of destruction by water and by fire, but it's still the same heavens, same earth. This is a new heaven and new earth completely that is upcoming. The first heaven, first earth, that is what we're on now. The new heaven and new earth. If the new heaven and new earth, something completely new is coming up, the first heaven and first earth is that which was created in Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The heaven and the earth that has gone through periods of destruction by water, destruction by fire. This is still the same terra firma. It's still the heavens. Although the heavens have been changed, they have been dissolved in the past, they're still the heavens that were from those eras. We have the new heaven and new earth upcoming. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is the first earth. This is the first heaven that is mentioned that passes away in Revelation, at the end of Revelation 20 and the beginning of Revelation 21. And when that occurs, Jesus' words will be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The vision of the new heaven and new earth. This is something that's going to be completely different. This will be at the time of the great white throne judgment. The, the, the first heaven and earth that were created, Genesis 1, the heaven and earth that we are experiencing right now, it will be completely removed. And there will be a completely new heaven and earth that New Jerusalem descends to with Jesus within it. This is things for upcoming. The vision of the new heaven and new earth. It's going to be mind-blowing. It's going to be something that we can't even fathom. But as believers, it's something that we are to look forward to, and it will with certainly occur. So that's my study on the new heaven and new earth as compared to the new heavens and new earth. And I like this. To close this slide, a new age is dawning, a new earth while we're still here living in Satan's little season. So we'll do another video, a couple of videos that I want to do in the near future looking at Old Testament types and shadows of the Millennial Kingdom. So I hope to do those soon. Be looking forward to that. God bless.